Hello everyone, welcome to the show. I'm Marie. Today we have another great episode. We'll be talking with an amazing student activist in the Boston area. There's a great conference coming up and he's going to be telling you all about that and more. His name is Michael Palio, who's, um who's been very busy for the past few days. I know you had a speaking gig. You spoke at the recent conference on social justice a few days ago. Yeah, Saturday. <laughs> I feel like it was just like yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> so how was that experience? It was, uh, it was actually a good experience. I learned a lot and you know, being on the panel yeah. also, also made me realize how important education is. Mm -hmm. um, dealing with social, just in the social mm -hmm. part of it, and just really networking with a lot of people and different, meeting new people mm -hmm. was amazing. And just seeing how strong, how like, how important education is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think being a student right now, so it's not just about getting a grade yeah. and graduating, but also, because I know at that conference there were activists, there were educators there, and also students you know, your peers were mm -hmm. also involved, which was really interesting because I rarely see all these different people in the same room yeah. agreeing on things. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, I also, um, I was also running a workshop too. Oh my God. So you yeah. were on the panel, then you have a session. It, well, it was a workshop, then I was on the panel. Oh my <laughs> God. So a lot of different hats that day. So overall, you had a good time. Yes, it was, it, was, it was a good experience. Yeah, I heard people were just posting left and right saying how great everything went, including I'm sure a lot of good conversations yeah. that you guys have to continue after Definitely. this year. Do you think there'll be a year two, another conference next year? Definitely. Still I, be. I, mean, there sh I mean, there should be because there's more we have to talk about okay. um, on our education. And just uh, an important, top an important um, thing that I brought up was um, having a student union. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And it was, you know, something that just came to me and during the yeah, during the panel, <laughs> the they were talking about, I forgot what, what was being talked okay. about, but then we was talking about teaching unions, and I was like, hey, what if mm. we had a student union, yeah. you know, so that's something I'm going to be looking forward to next to year, on. Um, working on and starting a campaign to see okay. if we can have a student union, and just, you know, see a different perspective of the students and see what we have to offer, and, you know, how we come up with things, and, you know, because it's, at the end of the day, it's mm -hmm. for us. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think... Um, that I, it seems so common sense when you came up with it that I'm like, why don't I haven't we had this already? <laughs> Even the conference, I'm like, why are we having this now? We should have already been having, yeah. but at least we started, and it seemed like people are committed to sort of keep it going, not just talking about education, which mm -hmm. a lot of people seem to be happy to be doing, yeah. but really changing things uh, for the better for students and teachers because I think teachers get such a bad rap and. You you go into an amazing school. You want to tell us a little bit about I don't know how you got into Fenway and how your experience been so far there. Well, for me, my let's just my middle school year. It was you know it was really not that good. Okay. And you know, I was a I was a bad student, and you know teachers can say that even Miss Tang. I know oh. you've spoken to her about mm -hmm. it. And you know. So she was your teacher. Yeah, she was my eighth grade teacher. <gasps> nice. And you know I wasn't that good. I got held back my sixth grade year, so. That year was when, uh, like, throughout my middle school years, it was just one of those years where I mm -hmm. began to grow and, you know, began to realize more about how important my education is. And then I was doing a lot of research. And, you know, I, w I went to a big school. The Gavin was a big mm -hmm. school. So I decided, you know, maybe I want to try something new. Okay. And I decided to go to Fenway High because, you know, how, one, it was a small school. Mm -hmm. The relationships with the teachers and students, it's outstanding it's it's amazing and you know now that I'm there I'm here mm -hmm. and it's like it's a big leap. <laughs> yes it's like I sometimes question myself like what if I didn't attend Fenway mm -hmm. High School would I still be a, a active youth member mm -hmm. in the community mm -hmm. will I still be doing the stuff that I do now so being at Fenway High it has brought out has opened a lot of doors for me um, you know Fenway is a very good school we they've prepared students for college and mm -hmm. really want to see their students succeed, especially the opportunities that are given at Fenway High is just amazing. And you know, if there was more schools like Fenway, more students I, I wouldn't want to say more students would succeed, but you know, the outcome would be that more students mm -hmm. would become better in um, their academics. And I'm currently doing so much at uh, so much out of school inside of school. I know. Yeah, I know. So, it's like. What kind um, of schedule? Yeah, I'm like. So and this is only what, like junior year. Yeah, junior year. I don't want to see you next year. Oh, you gotta be losing it, <laughs> applying for yeah, school, and so then it's like, juggling. I know entering my freshman year, I really never thought I would be get nominated mm -hmm. for any, you know, wow. anything. So 
my freshman year, I got nominated for this program at Harvard University mm -hmm. called Crimson Summer Academy. So I got nominated for it, and I'm like, wow, me? Mm -hmm. Nominated you. for something like this? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I took the initiative, you know, I went through the process mm -hmm. of applying, had to go through an interview process, and next thing you notice, I got accepted. It. So it's, you know, something, something like I feel great, great about because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm beginning to realize, you know, that my education is important, yeah. you know, and I've been, you know, really improving on my academics and, and that program is really motivating. So it's like in order to return back in the summer, you have to maintain a B average. Oh, okay. So, or you know, better. yeah, or better. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I've just been doing a lot I, since I've entered Fenway High. Mm -hmm. I'm president of student government. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, I'm a part of the board of trustees at my school. Big decisions there. Uh, I'm, I'm a, I uh, also step. I'm a oh step. Oh, my right. God. <laughs> um, there's more, but. Well, I know. Yeah. The list is really long. Yeah, but definitely. Yeah, I want to remind our viewers, we are live. If you want to talk with Michael, ask us any questions about the conference coming up, what he's working on. If you want him to share more on what he's doing on his list, you can call <laughs> us at home, 617-876-0055. The number is right on your screen. Um, I know you posted on your Facebook, so you can also connect that way. So let's dive right into the conference because I know it's days away. Yeah, definitely. Um, I know it's on Wednesday. So what's going on? How did the conference come about? And I love the title. Youth, um, youth in the Struggle yeah, Building yeah. the Grassroots Movement. I know. Yeah, um, so I, I guess... guess our, every year, uh, school um, is given the opportunity to um, host a leadership conference, mm -hmm. and you know it just just evolves around you know a, you know students in the Boston area. So I guess my principal, we we had a meeting on a Wednesday student government. My principal, Miss Kemp, walked in and said, you know we've we've been given the opportunity to um, host a leadership conference mm -hmm. this year, and I've been to them before, and they were just great. And you know how students take the initiative, and you know really putting their effort in these these conferences so i was like hmm should we do it yeah <laughs> so we had our little meeting we was like yes we're doing it we're <laughs> okay. doing it great and now you know now we have this this up uh, this event coming up on mm -hmm. wednesday it's here so it's youth in the struggle building the grassroots mm -hmm. movement and throughout that whole day we're going to see a variety of workshops from students um sim student immigrant movement mm -hmm. they'll be talking more about the dream act they'll be talking about um their next moves about the in-state tuition we also have another workshop from el movimiento the movement um is an organization that i'm also um a part of oh, wow. <laughs> so um that organization is really um going to implement ethnic studies into boston public schools and what they'll be focusing on that day is you know how important um how important it is for us to learn about our cultures and where we come from because if you don't know who you are then you don't know where you're going mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we also have um, other workshops from students that um, attend other Boston public schools we also have a guest speaker um, his name's Big Dan oh. I'm flying out from California wow. so he's That's gonna be more of a motivational speaker okay. and speaking to the students how you guys chose him to be your um, well I've um, met Big Dan a while back mm -hmm. from a conference that I was at, oh, attended okay. <laughs> so all the networking yeah so yeah networking is yeah. a big factor in our yeah. lives nice. so I met him and you know I spoke to my teacher about it. I was like hey do you remember Big Dan mm -hmm. he was like yeah I was like maybe he would you know be a motivational speaker wow. and you know contribute to the conference mm -hmm. because of his story and what he has to say and you know throughout he, he did struggle but he was able to get his bachelor's degree um, at I forgot what college it was again, mm -hmm. but he, he was able to get his bachelor's degree, and now he's just moving on and you know being a successful mm -hmm. um, Latino. So nice. it's like you know, even though you struggle, you're able to cross these barriers and you know just overcome them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's nice to see um, the examples because a lot of time if you don't see those images mm -hmm. in terms of whether it's people who look like you, people your age, or just somebody else who can just connect. Um, at that level who's been through some things where you can feel like you know what maybe I can yeah. overcome whatever and still make it also talk to me a little bit about the ethnic studies in terms of why you think it's important to have that whether it's at the high school level usually you wait yeah. until college you're like okay let's do African American studies yeah. or other studies that are usually missing why do you think it's important to have it at the high school level well I mean if you it's it's really important because of the fact that one a lot of students, if you if you really look at it, a lot of students you you know really do not know who they are. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of tension going around with 
different, you know, individuals, black versus brown or brown versus white or black versus white. So learning about, you know, everyone's culture would really, you know, make them more aware and, and you know, they would want to be more, better, better. They want to be better, you know what I mean? So one, it would, it's, it would improve the academics because learning about your culture would really, you know, inspire them to want to learn more and wanting to succeed. You know what I mean? So students would want to read more okay. because of the fact that they're learning about their culture. Students would want to, you know, take the initiative and really try to, you know, form a community within their community and, you know, really bring the community together. Mm -hmm. Ethnic studies is not all about learning about Latino studies. It's more than that. It's learning about Latino studies, African American studies, European inclusive. studies. So everything, yeah. everything comes together, okay. and it and it just really shows how everyone is. Everything is similar to one another, mm -hmm. and so it's like really having an idea of you know where everyone comes from because you know every day I'm speaking to friends, and we always talk about people. People consider, me, hey, you're Spanish, mm -hmm. and I'm like. <laughs> No, I speak Spanish. I'm a Latino. And it's just like that type of stuff right mm -hmm. there. If they learn it throughout the ethnic studies mm -hmm. class, they'll be, they'll know he's not Spanish. Mm -hmm. He's Latino. Right. You know what I mean? So it's it's important because, you know, students would really learn more and students would really want to achieve and really want to be able to, you know, step out their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you really don't learn anything until you get to college. Right. That's what I was thinking, yeah. usually at that level. Yeah. Because even as you were talking about it, I'm thinking everything is included. Because I think, depending on who you're talking to, they're thinking it's like a separate thing. Like, no. if you're learning about this group, everything is chopped off. Mm -hmm. Where you're not mixing at all. Because I'm, sh I'm sure your school is really diverse. So it's really yeah. hard to just focus on one thing the way we have this month is for this, the next month is for that. And it's like, yeah. then you do it separately when there's a common ground between all of us. Yeah. And it's like, ethnic studies doesn't even have to include, does, it's not also about your culture. It's mm -hmm. also learning about social movement. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if I was to ask a student right now who was, uh, which organization had the flag on the stat, the Puerto Rican flag on the Statue of Liberty for almost 32 hours, some students wouldn't even know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, learning more about what has happened in the U.S. and what has happened outside of the U.S. is really important and it plays a big role in, in our education. Mm -hmm. So you think there's a global aspect to it too? Because I know especially this year there's been so many things that happens outside and of every, the U.S. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you almost have to not just be concerned about what's going on in your backyard but what's happening to other people whether it's another continent or another country. Definitely, whether... definitely. Um, I think being aware of what's going outside, of, being aware of what's going on outside of the outside of the U.S. is mm -hmm. also important, because you know students are so students are inside a ball and really having you know stepping out and having you know real seeing other stuff outside of the world. Mm -hmm. For instance, myself, I was able to attend a Dominican Republic trip from at my school for um, almost what two weeks and. We went to the Dominican Republic, and it was my first time flying. Oh my God! <laughs> ever so, it's like. So was that a group? It was a group. Together? It was a group okay. trip. So, that there has also made me realize how I should appreciate my education mm -hmm. more, and how other students and other kids do not have the same opportunities mm -hmm. that I have. So it's like, wow. I can't believe I I came to this trip. Mm -hmm. So it's like stuff like that really inspires students. So being aware of about what's happening in in other countries is also, you know, one motivational mm -hmm. and, you know, just really inspiring. And I think ethnic studies will be a you know, bring a, a, a good part of why it should be impl implemented in our mm -hmm. curriculum. Great. So let's before we run out of time, we only have a few minutes. So the conference is this it's Wednesday. so the conference is this Wednesday. Yep. Youth in the struggle, building the grassroots movement. Um, it's from eight thirty to three o'clock. It's the whole day. It, yeah, so it will be yeah. at Mass Art College. Lunch will be provided, and it will be a, it will be a great time to come and meet students and you know really, really network with everyone and really see how you know just form a community amongst the students. Okay. So I know you have a speaker. How many sessions do you have where people can? Uh, we have two sessions, two uh -huh. workshop sessions. We're also gonna have uh, a panel. Okay. 
Um, Are you on the panel? <laughs> no, I'm not on the panel. <laughs> and we're going to have performers as well. So okay. it's going to be pretty interesting. It's going to be a really pretty interesting day. So are there mostly students from Fenway performing and participating, or is oh, it all from BPS? Oh, no, no, it's students oh, right all, all around all um, Boston Public Schools. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we also have, I know one of the performers is coming from Northeastern, okay. Ashley Rose, a great poet. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay. yeah. So sh this is going to be more like Poetry Slam? Or? Um, well, the performance is going to be um, sort of also in inspirational mm -hmm. and motivational, but just, you know, to get an idea of how you don't have to... You know, just to get an idea of how being a, an actress or a musician, mm -hmm. you know, can express your thoughts and your feelings. And that, you know, shows a lot. And mm -hmm. that, you know, really shows how dedicated you are. So it seems like the theme is going to be somehow you're going to fit it in and everything. So whether yes. it's the session, the speakers, mm -hmm. performance that are being done. So it's not just have a good time, but, you know, hoping people will learn through those interactions. And just day. learn how these organizations um, have you know, came about and how they all started because mm -hmm. they're all grassroots right. organizations. So, uh, is there still time to register? I know there's there definitely like, is still time day. to register. Where do um, they go? Where should we go to? Uh, if we're looking for ten students, um, for for every school, okay. I know some schools are already res um, reserved. But if you receive the email from from one of my colleagues, Amy, okay. Amy Byer, she has sent out emails to every principal, and I know some principals haven't, um, you know, emailed us back, okay. but. If you're still looking for, if you're really interested in the event, um, you can email me at uh, Vallejo Michael, V as in Victor, A L L E J O, M I C H A E L at gmail.com and just you know, tell me the ten, the name, the list of ten students and the chaperone that will be attending the event. Okay, so on that day, students have permission. No yes, school. yes, students so. will have permission. Um, students, the 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 um the person that will be coming with the students mm -hmm. should write up the permission permission slips okay. and you know they'll have they'll be excused for that day okay so then you're good. Mm -hmm. I know the year is almost over yeah so, so after do you think this conference will continue or what do you hope will come out of that day I mean every time we have a conference I really um every conference that I attend I mm -hmm. hope for that to be the beginning of something okay so this is just the beginning of youth in the struggle and this is the beginning of us making sure our voices get heard did you were you part of that rally that took place a few days? Because there's a rally about evaluating, um, like student uh, teachers evaluation. I no, I wasn't a it. part of it. Um, because I know there's so much student activism going yeah, on I know, this yeah, time yeah. around. So I, I know I was great. um part of the the rallies that were happening at the superintendent when mm -hmm. they were the board the meetings when oh, they had okay. the meetings. I yeah. was part of that. Yeah, because I know there was something at city hall. So I mean, I think it'll be great to see all those students come together yeah. and talk about. What everybody the is issues doing. as and, and it's all it's all education yes. it's all public education and everything involves everything is together and it's based off education you know every every organization that that is you know focusing on mm -hmm. something has yeah. to deal with education right. so we just really need to um, come together and you know really come up with ideas and issues that you know we can bring up to the pol these politicians that you know decide about our education and just really let them know and just let them yeah, yeah get involved yeah, so I mean, all this stuff, it's all about change. So I think when people come together, amazing things always happen. Mm -hmm. And I hope the conference is just the beginning. Yes, yeah, definitely the Luckily, beginning. Luckily, you have one more year to go. You're not graduating <laughs> <laughs> yet. No, so you I'm have just, a lot of work yeah. left to be done. So hopefully there are other you know, leaders coming after you to continue the work. So let's give your email address one more time. Before uh, we get up. Vallejo Michael at gmail.com. V as in Victor, A-L-L-E-J-O. M I C H A E L at gmail.com. Okay. And then you can always email me, uh, talkwithmarie.com, and I'll give you more information. I want to thank you for being thank on the so show. Thank you so much for having me. Um, and we'll let you know how the conference um, went. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much.